Hello and welcome to Lightways Art Life Astrologer with me, Anna Isabel. I'm a psychological astrologer and analytical hypnotherapist. And today I have, well, a very fun subject. Um, it's Fernanda Paiva who is with me, and mm -hmm. she's here to talk about cooking and astrology. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I mean, it's great. Yeah, it's great to be here. Well, you're going to be giving a talk at the Astrological Lodge of London on the 20th of March called the, um, the Astrology of Culinary. And being a Taurus, I couldn't resist. Yeah. <laughs> so so tell, tell us about the link between cooking, food and astrology. Well, um, I think, you know, being an astrologer, whenever you're interested in a subject you can always think oh i wonder what's the astrology of this and um and want to have a look at the charts of people that created at the charts of you know the institutions around or anything anything like that so when i thought about doing the culinary um it was basically because i'm very interested in cookery shows <laughs> and like i get a lot of inspiration from the shows that i watch you know the documentaries and and etc so then i'm like oh i wonder if I could put a talk together about this. So um, I'm very interested in uh, all sorts of cookery shows. I mean, I, I watched the series about Julia Child and I absolutely loved it. And then I went to check her story and I watched a movie about her and I was like, oh my God, I, I love it. And, and I loved her chart as well. And, you know, and, and all of the story behind as well. So that's kind of like where it started. It sort of started from this, um, this sort of interest that, I kind of have it on my as a hobby, as a kind of a, my day, you know, when I'm having a, a relaxing time and I can't resist. I'm like having a relaxing time and checking people's charts at the same time um, to see if I see a reflection there. And and I love Gordon Ramsay as well. I've watched, you know, Master Chef, Health Kitchen, you know, a lot of like his TV shows as well. And I remember how he used to be, you know, oh my God, you know, Gordon Ramsay is so rude and he's this and he's that, but he's actually a real decent person. Like when you watch, you know, when you watch the shows enough, you see that he's, you know, he's a, he's a very interesting character as well. So that kind of started all coming, you know, and then I saw his chart as well. I was like, oh, I can see where the passion comes from and where this and that. So, you know, there's no, short answer to your question I guess because we can see anything from the lens of astrology from various different angles as well and this is what I love the most it's like to just try to find something interesting about it and look into a, a whole range of different charts as well you know I might even like attempt to look at the chart of the um, culinary famous schools as well you know the one in France and the one that Julia Child went to and and see if there's anything in that you know, in those charts that will be reflecting um, the story and their style and, you know, see what, what they can reveal for us, you know, it's, it's really an exercise. <laughs> Is there a theme that you have found? Um, it's, it's a good question, and because I think that's for anything. It's like, oh, I've been researching about um, serial killers or something. It's like, oh, is that a theme? And I loved, I went to uh, a talk by John Green once about serial killers and, and he was saying, well, there isn't really a signature for, you know, serial killers, but there is a signature for their style. So are they going to, you know, butcher you with an ax or are they going to poison you slowly? Well, if they poison you slowly, they bet, you bet they're a bit Neptunian, they've got, you know, Neptune rising or something like that. So I think what the astrology does is to show us their style. Like I'm very interested in researching Heston's Blumenthal um, astrology chart because he came up, I mean, he wasn't the first one to come up with, but he's very famous for um, molecular gastronomy, which is a very interesting, it's like mixing science and molecular, you know, like breaking apart, like the, the you know, different elements of, of a plate. So I'm like, oh, what's his chart saying about that, you know? And I imagine that would be a very different chart from Gordon Ramsay's and, and his style of cooking and his style of, you know, Ramsay's got, I think, 
I might be saying wrong because I'm still, you know, I haven't prepared because I have so many talks as well. And before the talk, I'm giving to the lodge. But um, but I'm sure like he's got something like 16 Michelin stars or, you know, he's got like it's this big number of Michelin stars. And he's got a very strong Virgoan chart. Now you can imagine that this is definitely coming out as like the perfectionism, the eye for detail and the and the passion with his um, planets in Scorpio as well. So you mix the Scorpio with you know the Virgo and you have this ability to achieve this ability to achieve so many Michelin I, stars. I seem to remember is he a Sun Neptune conjunction? There's he might be I, I know he's a Sun Venus conjunction in, in Scorpio. So he's Sun Venus and I think he's a moon Pluto Saturn conjunction. No, Saturn's opposition. He's a moon Uranus Pluto conjunction in Virgo. Opposite it's, Saturn in the it seemed, it, it's tickled me, of course, Hell's Kitchen with him being a Scorpio, you know, the title and everything. Um, but the I do seem to remember there being a Neptunian factor to here. And the reason it caught my eye was mm -hmm. because there was this element of him yeah with with the intention of as he's tearing something apart of mm -hmm. actually wanting to be helpful mm -hmm. um and then and wanting to piece it back together and there just seems to be this perhaps overzealous messianic element mm -hmm. to the way he was what he was trying to do um mm -hmm. which yeah. i thought was interesting and hessen blumenthal i seem to remember there being a strong Uranian connection. Well, it must be, isn't it? That's a science. Yeah. I mean, we, I do connect Uranus with the science, with this whole chemi you know, chemistry. Because um, if, I remember, he is, if I remember, he's a Gemini. Um, I can't even see his chart yet. Not a Gemini, then, there's, then he's an Aquarius, but there's a strong Uranian element. I haven't seen his chart for a few years now, so I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah. And Jamie Oliver, the way he speaks you know could it's so gemini and you know the throwing something here throwing something there and yet that strong business acumen that he has this moon in capricorn um driving it as well so it, what you're talking about funnily enough when i i started looking into a lot of the the chefs i expected to see a lot of Taurus, but actually what, what i found was a lot of capricorn so yeah. you know maybe maybe taurians like to explore food at home and just yeah, enjoy exactly. they like to rather eat than it, <laughs> rather than turn it into into something that is public and um a business, business. Or, maybe yeah. just, or maybe there's maybe there's a lot of taurians who own restaurants <laughs> yeah exactly or like yeah exactly definitely a lot of taurians eating those foods as well isn't it it's like they don't necessarily want to take it to a professional level necessarily but definitely i mean gordon ramsay as well has a gemini rising and a, and a mercury in sagittarius so i think this preachy the teacher teaching people and you know and, and breaking things apart in this way i think it comes from that side as well of, of, of his personality and absolutely what you're saying about house kitchen um i think there are a lot of these tv shows that have this sort of like scorpio like scorpion element to it that's like fire you know in the in the in the entrance of you know the opening of the show as well and i think it's really interesting um kitchen nightmares as well is another one yes um, that's that was the other one that made me think oh yeah scorpio here we go <laughs> yeah, exactly there's this element of scorpio there um very strongly so yeah absolutely um so yeah i mean i i i don't know if i'm gonna find any signature that's gonna be specific but but definitely will show their style um, and what they, you know, what they do. I think Julia Child had uh, uh, Virgo and elements as well in her chart, but she, she was a Leo. And I love that as well, that she was a Leo. And you can kind of see as well the Leonine sort of aspect of her, the Leonine side of her as well, because she's so authentic. I love that about her. Like she needs to be herself. Like there's no way, like she wouldn't compromise in any way and try to please or try to be something else. I love her story as well. The fact that she got, um, 
you know, she got successful after her 40s, you know, up to her 40s, she like, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what, you know, sort of path to take. Like she married later, she didn't have kids. So she was very different from the majority in that regard, you know, for, for her time as well. So I love the, um, I love the authenticity of her story and the message behind as well of like, you can accomplish, you know, things, doesn't matter what age you are, like this whole, and even like she was successfully married, which is something I love as well about her, you know, when we have so many stories and examples of relationships that didn't work, and she had this very successful relationship, they were, they were friends, they were very supportive of each other, and they were married, and they were together for many years, but he passed away before her, and I find so inspiring that in her 80s or something, she got a boyfriend, and she, you know, she started dating someone. So there's something about her Leo nine, like passion for life and, you know, and authenticity as well that I really love. And I think that's definitely into her cooking as well. Like the cook, you know, the cookery show. She was the first woman in having a TV show and, and how she got that show as well. And, you know, um, and how successful she became, you know, just, just being herself and, and sharing things and having that really iconic laughter um as well so again i think what we see with astrology is the the particularities of each one of them and how they, they come out because i mean there were loads of other people being born at the same time as julia child and nobody else was julia child or gordon Ramsay or you know jamie oliver and etc so it's a mystery well, that makes us ourselves yeah so just to confirm because i i've just well whilst i was listening to you um had a, a quick peek at um gordon Ramsay's chart. And mm -hmm. a, a six degree orb between the sun and Neptune. So okay. I did remember, looked at this for years, but it seems to stick in my mind. And Heston Blumenthal, incidentally, also moon in Virgo, but probably conjunct Uranus. That's what I remember seeing. Yeah. It has, yeah. <laughs> it has, it. it's designed for detail, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure it, Juliet Child also has Virgo because I remember that. Let me, I have her chart here as well. I mean, so the whole idea of the talk came from this sort of like, you know, hobbyish documentaries, the stories that I'm watching and things that I'm seeing. And I'm like, oh my God, this person is so inspiring. I really need to check them out and like see what, what they're about. So Julia Child is a Gemini rising with Saturn rising there in Gemini. And uh, she's a son in Leo, but is a stellium in the fourth house. Now we get this, the Cancerium fourth house flavor there in her case because you didn't have professional chefs as a, as a woman as well at her time, right? She was born in 1912. So we're really talking about a very different um, time as well. So she had to kind of really, you know, start this path that, you know, we can choose to be chefs now as women, but she couldn't at the time. Anyhow, so she had this stale in the fourth house and she's, had, she's got sun in, in Leo. She's got Mercury, Venus and Mars in Virgo. So there's a very strong stellium Virgo there and is the chart ruler because the ascendant is in Gemini. So again, we have a Virgo and element there. So maybe there is something Virgo and, you know, about chefs and the precision, you know, as well with, with yeah. what they do. And I, was they do. I was just thinking about you talking about women and not, this, not necessarily coming into prominence through being chefs, but it's the, that, and I was thinking about Mary Berry and mm -hmm. um and delia smith who another capricorn and N nigella lawson also another capricorn um i don't think any of them were chefs but they they came to prominence for their mm -hmm. cookbook um and their uh, all of being all over the tv etc um for their cooking so yeah. different roots then into mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. uh, which, yeah. is, which is interesting Mm, it might have a different element to it as well if we look into their charts they might have more cancer more taurus you know more of the elements of like our own you know our own like the commoner life is like we love cook i know a lot of taurians that love eating obviously but they do enjoy cooking as well most of them i don't really remember anyone that's got a strong taurus that i know of that don't like cooking that absolutely you know don't enjoy mixing flavors and they might not enjoy baking or something that's a little bit more technical but they do enjoy cooking you know for them like having good food is really important so they you know is an ability that they they develop 
um, my brother is a very good cook. He's very, um, he's very much a perfectionist. He's a Capricorn, but he loves cooking. He's a moon in Cancer. So again, we have this whole, you know, is the sustenance and the cooking. And it's really interesting because my brother works with film. So he's a filmmaker, he's very creative. He's got planets in the fifth house and, you know, the sun in Capricorn that really is very ambitious, but he's a moon in Cancer in the 10th house. And one of the first things he shared with me as he started working with films and, you know, he was sort of like climbing that ladder slowly, slowly as a Capricorn will do. But as he started and he started as a runner and, you know, being an assistant of this and whatever during his Saturn return as well, that's when he really started. He was shocked at the bad food that they would serve on set. And he was like, I can't believe, like all I ate was crisps and, you know, whatever else in my sandwiches. So the first film that he did himself, like he, he, he filmed something, he you know managed to get a grant or something and made a little film. I don't know if it was a commercial or something, but he did a little film. First thing he did was to cook a massive batch of pasta to be able to take on a day after to the set. So people could have proper food while they were working, you know? And I really like, I saw that's such a great um, example of a moon in cancer in a tent house, you know, it's like, I got to feed my, you know, it's like, is that work? Work is really important, but I'm going to feed my stuff, you know, because food's really important. So I thought that was really cool. And, and again, I see this sort of domestic element of like feeding people, and, you know, and all of that. Yeah. There is a difference, isn't there, between the, the domesticity side of it, um, mm -hmm. about nurturing and, and the, the sensual pleasure and mm -hmm. the professional side of it that mm -hmm. um, might go a little bit more towards the aesthetic um, and forget yeah. about the, the, the reason why we're eating, um, yeah. which is actually to enjoy the, the flavors rather than what it looks like on the plate. Um, yeah. Although we talk with our eyes, we can get to the extreme um, mm -hmm. of more attention to the way it looks and less to the the actual food itself so mm -hmm. we're talking a lot about people what about the cookery schools have you found an or i don't i'm throwing this into the pot here but i'm not sure that you even looked at this um national culinary styles mm, that's very interesting as well i mean i haven't really i haven't really looked so i'm sort of like i have this very broad and when it, whenever I read a blurb for a talk as well, I keep it very broad on purpose because you have to send a blurb so much in advance. And it's like, in like five months, I might change my mind and I might want to talk about something else. So when I put like a, the, the astrology of culinary, I allowed myself to have enough space, enough room to just look into whatever it is. One thing that I think I might be looking into for sure is the history of culinary and look into some of the names. So when I was like, Having a quick look, for example, as you know, before um, before our conversation now, you know, there's like there's some names in history in like 1700 something, which is like the first person to play around with molecular gastronomy, for example. And I'm like, hmm, you know, I wonder. So, so there's a French um, a French woman in 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 the 19th century that started sort of doing you know molecular gastronomy so I might look into the history of it as well which I think um would be very interesting and revealing as well of of you know I, I did that with um I gave a talk recently about uh Pluton Aquarius and I really looked into I mean I have to pick a few themes because it's such a broad subject and again I left a very broad blurb <laughs> so then I could prepare something that was more fresh for me at the time and um and I picked some of the, you know, I picked three themes, but one of the things is about AI. And I really did that with AI. It was like, oh, okay, that was the first convention, you know, it was the first convention of, about artificial intelligence. And I kind of cast the chart for that. And I cast the chart of the first computer programmer, you know, years ago, even, even before we had the technology that was in the 1700s. And, and so I casted all of these different random charts that had a little bit of a role in the history of, of artificial intelligence. And yes, Alice, obviously there was a strong Leo and Aquarius there, you know, it's like either Leo or Aquarius or, or an opposition between Leo and Aquarius and a kind of that sort of emerged, which is, you know, expect, expectable, let's say. So I'm kind of planning to do the same with um, culinary as well and look into, you know, that French school 
the blue uh, cordon bleu you know i'm really interested in trying to find when that was funded like what's the history of it and try to find the chart for it as well so see what you know what comes up there but i haven't looked into it yet um I haven't looked into it yet. I'm very interested in Fanny Craddock as well. Um, my partner's mom introduced me to her months ago when I was visiting her. And it's this lady as well that was very famous in the 70s, I think, doing um, cookery shows as well. And this very strange character. I mean, her, her eyebrows is very, very peculiar as well. And I was like, oh, okay. And apparently she died in poverty as well. And I'm like, wow, so she's got an interesting story. I really want to add her there as well. And again, it's like, you know, it's, it's a different, it's, it has a very different quality compared to the male chefs. So I don't know, let's see what, um, what rises, you know, what surfaces from the, from the, um, from the, have, the research, yeah. Have you looked into her chart yet, Fanny Craddock's? I think I, ha I thought I had. Um, I was trying to find here if I have in my. Um, I was just curious as to what sign she is or what what her moon sign would be. I'm gonna Google quickly here as we talk just to see. Um, but she has a very interesting. Um, well, she was born on 26 of February 1909, so um, she was a Pisces, isn't it? Yeah. Let me see if I can find the chart as well. Well, there's a all famous website. Let's see. I don't know if they have the time though of her birth. Did you say 1909? Yeah, 1909. Well, that I uh, think was Pluto in Cancer at that point, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so, definitely um i mean, yeah i think so i mean the end of, end of 1800s it was a pluto in gemini wasn't it oh hang on i think it might still be in gemini at that point yeah it was pluto in gemini so her pluto is 24 gemini so she was a um, uh, sun in pisces with mercury venus in aquarius mars in capricorn um and the moon I don't know if the time is accurate here. I'd have to have a look more properly. But the moon here is at zero degrees Gemini. So she could well have had moon in Taurus. Yes. Um, which would again explain the connection as well with food. Um, but the Venus and Mercury in Aquarius, I guess that can be seen by the aesthetic and how she looked because she looked quite peculiar, I think. Um, there was something very Aquarian about how she looked, I think. Yeah. Yeah, almost sci-fi-ish. There's something, yeah, interesting about her looks. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be very interesting to see what you do with all of this uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to your talk. And so just to remind everyone that the talk is on the 20th of March, and I will be putting a link to the Astrology Lodge um, on the description box uh, to accompany this talk, what um, what is your website, Fernandez? If people um, can get to get in touch yeah. with, you. of course, my website is fernandapaiva.co. So www.fernandapaiva.co. C O. Okay, yeah. I'll have a link to that in the description box as well. Thank you so Bye. much. For time Thank today. you. It's been really, really great to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we look, I look forward to seeing you in March. Thank you. I look forward to it as well. Take care. Uh, you too. Bye. -bye. bye. Um, oh, I've got to do an edit. I forgot to. I forgot that I need to do a proper outro here. <laughs> uh, well, oh, we're still recording, so. Yeah. Okay. Thank you again for your time, and thank you all for watching. And next time we are going to be looking at the metatonic cycle uh, until then you can have a look at my website or before then you can have a look at my website if you're interested in learning more about astrology and finding out what else i'm up to until next time goodbye <laughs>